Luminar AI gives us all the standard photo editing functionality that we find in Lightroom. In addition, all those artificial intelligence capabilities save us hours of faffing around in Photoshop. Added to that is a nice clean new piece of software that in my opinion is more pleasant and easier to use. Last but not least, it's a lot, lot cheaper. So why are we even having this conversation? Right, let's get into it now. Stuart Carroll here and welcome to another video in our photo editing series. Now, given the one-sided nature of that introduction, you could be forgiven for thinking that we are sponsored by Skylum, the company that makes the Luminar software. And you would be correct. We will earn a commission if you purchase it using the links in the description below. However, having been a user of Lightroom for years and a user of Luminar 4, the predecessor to Luminar AI, for one year, I am in a position to express some objectively founded opinions slash facts on this subject. So with that in mind, let's start with the reasons why you would buy Lightroom instead of Luminar AI. First up, Lightroom has a far more complex cataloging, categorizing, collectioning, flagging, tagging, ranking, rating type system for all your photographs within its platform. And this does have value if you're bringing in a tremendous number of photographs. Second up, Lightroom has a built-in panorama merge tool. It's something I use all the time and I would be lost without it. Third up, Lightroom has a built-in HDR merge tool. This is something I do quite often. It's a guilty pleasure of mine, HDR photography. And if you want to do it within the Luminar system, you need to purchase an extra piece of software called Aurora HDR. Fourth up, Lightroom is an extremely established and therefore reliable piece of software. Luminar, by contrast, in the early days at least, was plagued with bugginess and glitchiness. Now, latterly, things have been pretty smooth in that respect, but it's hard to compete with the heritage of a piece of software like Lightroom. Fifth and finally, Lightroom comes packaged with Photoshop. A minor detail that it comes with the most sophisticated photo editing software on the planet today. Just in case you've never seen it before, this is Lightroom's develop module where all the photo editing takes place. The tools are listed down the right hand side, starting with some basic color correction and color grading, and we work our way through color curves, hue saturation, luminance adjustments, sharpness, denoising, and some more advanced adjustments down towards the bottom. As I say, this is the industry standard, so if we compare this with Luminar, in my personal opinion here inside the edit module, we have a nicer layout. It's a little bit more intuitive. I like the way the tools are organized on the right hand side there. Even the color coding helps us navigate between essentials, as it's called there, your color correction, color grading, and some AI functionality, all the way through to creative and more advanced functions. Let's jump into the software using Lightroom's develop module as the reference point and just check that we've got everything that we need in Luminar AI. As you'd expect, we have the basic color correction tools like temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, so on and so forth. Lightroom's presence tools like texture, clarity, and dehaze are replicated first of all here in AI structure, which is a really cool tool within Luminar AI. And also if we go down to the landscape section, you can see there we have a dehaze, golden hour, and foliage enhancer. Within the Essentials tab of Luminar AI, we have access to an RGB tone curve, just like Lightroom, and we also have full HSL control of any given color within the image. Lightroom Classic's new color grading panel, formerly known as Split Toning, is fully represented here in the toning panel of Luminar AI, in addition to color harmony. So the ability to manipulate colors in the highlights, midtones, and shadows is fully represented here in Luminar AI. Much like Lightroom Classic, we have the full capability to sharpen an image and enhance details, in addition to denoising high noise images with a denoise panel. Lens corrections are covered here in the optics panel, where the auto distortion corrections does a great job of straightening out bendy horizons courtesy of wider angle lenses. For example, we can remove chromatic aberrations, defringe, and devignette. Many of the transform options here are replicated in the crop panel of Luminar AI, but what we don't have is the guided transform where we can draw horizontal and vertical lines on an image in Lightroom to help the software identify where the straight edges should be within an image. 
In Luminar AI, we can of course add a vignette to our image. And what I particularly like here is you can choose a subject for that vignette. So the vignette is not always centered around the middle of the image. If for example, in a portrait, you have a head in the upper third of the image, we'll pick that as the subject and the vignette will center itself around the head, not the middle of the image. We don't have a calibration module as such, but as you've seen, we've got tons of options for manipulating our colors with the toning panel and the color harmony panel. Looking at the crop and resize modules, here you can see Lightrooms, it's fairly self-explanatory. Very similar here in Luminar AI. We do, however, have the addition of Composition AI, which in theory will help you achieve better compositions with your image. It remains to be seen if it can really do that, but it's a nice touch. Otherwise, everything else is pretty similar. One huge advantage of Luminar over Lightroom is its ability to remove unwanted objects from a scene. In Lightroom, we have basic clone and heal tools, which are fine for removing spots from faces or little unwanted imperfections elsewhere in the image, but it's not great for removing big sections of the image if so desired. By contrast, in Luminar, we have an erase tool, which is kind of comparable to the clone and heal tool, but we also have a clone and stamp tool, which is absolutely fantastic for completely manipulating an image, as you've seen in some of our previous videos. Gradient masks and brush masks are a big part of my workflow within Lightroom and they are fully replicated here in Luminar AI. Now, in addition to the functionality of being able to add a paint mask, a radial brush and a gradient mask using the new local masking panel here in Luminar AI, if you go into the vast majority of the functions within the Essentials tab, the Creative tab or the Portrait tab, you can paint them on as required without having to create new layers. You can just brush that on as you wish using the new masking tool that sits within that particular tool itself. We can't talk about Luminar AI without talking about its artificial intelligence. This is where it really takes a chunk out of Photoshop and gives us some functionality in one click that would otherwise take potentially hours to do in Photoshop. If we start with some templates, for example, the AI detects the scene in question, in this case it's a landscape, and it will suggest some templates. These aren't just color adjustments like LUTs. They apply some of the AI capabilities like AI Enhance, a little bit of structure, sky manipulations, so on and so forth. So they're a great starting point for one-click edits on your photos. We have another video where we take an in-depth look at Luminar AI's AI capabilities. But very quickly here, let me just show you, we've got AI Enhance, which does a great job of dragging out contrast and saturation in the right parts of the image. We have AI Sky Replacement, where as you can see, I've switched out the sky in one click for this orangey kind of sunset sky. We have Augmented Sky AI, where just at a click, I was able to add these birds to the image. We've got Atmosphere AI, which explains all that mist in the image that wasn't there beforehand. With sun rays, we can add some artificial sun rays, which do a great job of enhancing an already good image. Mood is not an AI function as such, but it gives us about 50 LUTs to play with to manipulate the colors within our image. In the Portrait tab, we have Face AI, where we can add some face light to subjects if desired. We can even slim those faces just by moving a slider if we want to. We have new functionality within the Eyes tab, where at one click we can change the color of a subject's eyes. We can add some flair in those eyes. We can also enhance those eyes by making them twinkle a bit and a whole bunch of other functions in there. In Skin AI, we can smooth out the skin automatically without losing detail in the eyes, the eyebrows, the mouth, the nose, the nostrils, all that kind of stuff. It just targets the skin. It's very, very clever. We even have a one-click imperfection remover, which is very useful as well. We have a new Body AI tab where we can slim the body tastefully in a way that actually enhances the image. So, what do you think? It's hard for me to say because I don't know exactly what you need out of a piece of photo editing software, but I think you can see here that Luminar AI is certainly a formidable competitor for the Lightroom Photoshop combination, especially when we take into account its price. I, for one, will be using this as my default photo editor. Previously, I felt that Luminar 4 was a good addition to the Lightroom Photoshop combination. It ran as a plugin as well within that platform. So you could do your basic color corrections within Lightroom, for example, and then jump across into Luminar for your sky replacement or any other kind of AI manipulation. Now, having experienced the speed and ease of use of Luminar AI, I'll go straight to Luminar AI in all honesty. I just, I just like it. And in some ways, I never really liked Lightroom. I found it clunky and a little bit unfriendly to use. 
Anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts. Some of you will have been editing photos a lot longer than me, so do share your thoughts in the comment below and we will see you next time.